I'm going to show you how to calculate drug dose based on body weight and we are starting right now. Hello, this is Dr. Dankwa and if this is your first time here and you like to learn pharmaceutical calculations, tips, tricks and more, then start by subscribing and clicking the bell so you don't miss anything. So let's get right to it. In this tutorial, I'm going to give a brief no fluff overview on calculating drug dose based on body weight and then we'll look at five carefully selected examples that illustrate the various ways in which you are likely to encounter calculating drug dose based on body weight. Now for most drugs, the usual dose is generally considered suitable for majority of individuals taking the medication and that is likely because of the wide therapeutic range of those drugs. But what we need to understand is the patient's weight actually plays an important factor when it comes to dosing and that is because the size of the body influences drug concentration in the body fluids and at the site of action. And so when it comes to dosing certain drugs for both adults and pediatric patients, it has actually become a standard to use what is known as a normalized dose. And so a normalized dose is actually expressed as the specific quantity of a drug per unit of the patient's weight. Now, since most drugs are dosed in milligrams, you will normally see the normalized dose as milligrams per kg. So anytime you see kg or kilogram in the denominator, it's referring to body weight. Now, depending on the drug, the dosage form, and the route of administration, you may end up with different units of measure. You may end up with milliliters, micrograms, and so on. But all of these must be normalized to the body weight. And so you could have micrograms per kg or milliliters per kg. And so why this is important is when you dose in this manner, you end up giving the quantity of drug which is specific to the weight of the patient being treated. And so you end up ensuring that you do not give too much or too little of the drug to the patient. So you don't end up with sub-therapeutic or lethal doses of the drug that you're trying to administer. Now there's a useful equation when it comes to this type of calculations. And that will be the patient's dose in milligrams being equal to the patient's weight in kilograms times the ratio of the drug dose in milligrams per kg. And so just keep in mind that anywhere you see the milligrams, it could be a different unit of measure. It could be microliters, it could be milliliters, it could be micrograms or kilograms. Just make sure that you're keeping your units consistent. Now for the examples in this tutorial, I'm going to be using dimensional analysis to actually solve those questions. And that is because if you really understand how dimensional analysis works, it's almost impossible to get a question wrong. But if you are an equation kind of person, then this equation will work really nicely for you. So I'm going to switch screens right now and we are going to look at the five powerful examples. So let's take a look at this question which says, the usual initial dose of chlorambucil is 150 microgram per kg of body weight. How many milligrams should be administered to a person weighing 154 pounds? So here, the first thing we want to do is identify the normalized dose. And in this question, the normalized dose is 150 microgram per kilogram. Now, because the answer requires us to find the amount of drug in milligrams, it may be a good idea to convert this normalized dose from micrograms per kg to milligrams per kg. So we can do a quick conversion by saying that a thousand microgram makes one milligram. And so the micrograms can cancel out and we now have a normalized dose of 0 0.15 milligram per kg. What this now means is that the 154 pounds needs to be converted to kilograms. And so we can take the 154 pounds and convert that to kilograms using the conversion factor 
that 2.2 pounds is one kilogram. So the pounds cancel out and we end up with 70 kilograms. And so what we can do now is we can take the normalized dose, which is a 0 0.15 milligram per kg and multiply that by the weight of the patient, which is 70 kg or 70 kilograms. The kilograms cancel out and we end up having 10.5 milligrams of chlorambucil. Let's take a look at another question which says a patient needs 5 milliliters per kilogram of fluid for dehydration. If a patient weighs 33 kilograms, how many tablespoons will they need? So here the first thing we want to do is identify the normalized dose which will be 5 milliliters per kg. So we have 5 milliliters per kilogram and we have the patient weight to be 33 kilograms. So we can multiply the normalized dose by the patient weight, 33 kilograms. The units of kilogram in the numerator will cancel out the units of kilogram in the denominator and that will end up giving us 165 milliliters. Now we don't stop here because the question is asking for tablespoons. So we need to take the 165 milliliters and convert that to tablespoons. So the conversion factor is 15 milliliters makes one tablespoon. And so the milliliters cancel out and you end up having 11 tablespoons. Let's take a look at another example. This question says a patient who is taking theophylline 0.8 milligrams per kg by mouth twice a day just found out he has a creatinine clearance of 27 so his theophylline will have to be renally adjusted. If he weighs 210 pounds and his dose needs to be decreased by 20%, what is his new daily dose? So in analyzing the question, the first thing we want to identify is the normalized dose. And in this question, it is given as 0 0.8 milligrams per kg. Now, if you read the question carefully, the 0 0.8 milligrams per kg is for a single dose. Okay. And you are given the theophylline twice a day. So you have actually two doses in one day and so the doses can cancel out and you actually end up having the 0 0.8 times the 2 which gives you 1.6 milligram per kilogram per day and that's important because the question is asking for the daily dose now this is the normalized dose for a patient with normal creatinine clearance However, because this patient has a creatinine clearance of 27, you have to decrease the dose by 20%, which means the actual dose that will be given to the patient is 80% of the 1.6. And 80% is 80 divided by 100, so that is the same as multiplying this dose by 0 0.8. And we are doing this because we want to know the actual normalized dose that is going to be used for this particular patient. So if we multiply the 1.6 by the 0 0.8, we end up having 1.28 milligrams per kilogram per day. And the next thing we actually need is the weight of the patient. So we can take the 210 pounds and convert that to kilograms. And the conversion factor is 2.2 pounds make one kilogram. So the pounds cancel out and you end up with 95.46 kilograms. So what we will do is we'll take the normalized dose for this particular patient, which is the 1.28 milligrams per kilogram per day. 
and we'll multiply that by the weight of the patient, which is 95.46 kilograms. The kilograms cancel out, and we end up with 122.2 milligrams. Let's take a look at another example, and this question says, JG was admitted to the hospital for severe chest pain. The doctor ordered metoprolol 5 mg per kg and he was given 200 mg by mouth of metoprolol. If JG weighs 175 pounds, how many milligrams over or under was the given dose? So in analyzing this question, we want to identify the normalized dose and that will be the 5 mg per kg. Now, because it's normalized to kg, we want to take the patient's weight, which is 175 pounds, and convert that to kilograms. So the conversion factor is 2.2 pounds make 1 kilogram. So the pounds cancel out, and you end up with 79.55 kilograms. And so now what we will do is we'll take the normalized dose, which is 5 milligrams per kg, and multiply that by the body weight in kilograms, which is 79.55 kilograms. The kilograms cancel out, and you end up with 397.55 milligrams. Now notice that the patient was given 200 milligrams, which is less than the 397.55. So already we know that the patient was given an amount which was under the dose that was required. So to determine exactly how much the patient was underdosed, we're going to take the 397.55 milligrams and subtract from that the 200 milligrams which was given and we end up with 197.55 milligrams. So to answer the question specifically, what we will say is the given dose was 197.55 milligrams under. Let's take a look at another example which says a 54-pound child was found to have a fungal infection, so the doctor prescribed griseofulvin 6 mg per kg every 6 hours for 6 weeks. The pharmacy has a 480 ml bottle of griseofulvin 400 mg per 5 ml. How many days will the bottle last? So in our analysis, the first thing we want to identify is what is the normalized dose? And so in the question, the normalized dose is 6 milligrams per kilogram, but it's every 6 hours. So because we know we are normalized to kilogram, the first thing we want to do is to take the patient's weight, which is 54 pounds, and we want to convert that to kilograms. So we go ahead and use the conversion factor of 2.2 pounds make 1 kilogram. The pounds cancel out and you end up with 24.55 kilograms. So that's the weight of the patient in kilograms. So we can now go ahead and take the normalized dose, which is 6 milligrams per kilogram every 6 hours. And because we are concerned about how many days, we would use the fact that there are 24 hours in one day to determine the normalized dose on a daily basis. Okay, so the hours cancel out, the six cancel out, and now your daily normalized dose is going to be 24 milligrams per kilogram per day. So the next thing we can do is figure out exactly how many milligrams the patient needs a day. So we take the 24 milligrams per kilogram per day and multiply that by the patient's weight which is 24.55 kilograms. The kilograms cancel out and you end up with 
189.2 milligrams per day. So now the next piece that we need is to actually find out how many milligrams of griseofolvin is present in the 480 milliliter bottle. And so we will take the concentration that has been given, which will be 400 milligrams of griseofolvin per 5 milliliter and multiply that by the total volume in the bottle, which is 480 milliliters. So the milliliters cancel out and you end up with 38,400 milligrams. And so the next thing that we will do is we will take the total quantity of grisofovin in the bottle, which is the 38,400 milligrams, and we will divide that by the amount that the patient needs per day, which would be the 589.2 milligrams per day. The milligrams cancel out and the day flips to the numerator and you end up with 65 days. So I hope you found this tutorial useful. If you did, be sure to like it and share it. And if you have any questions, please leave them in the comments and I will address them as soon as I see them. If you like to learn more pharmaceutical calculations, tips, tricks and strategies, then don't forget to subscribe and click the notification bell so you don't miss anything. Thank you so much for watching, enjoy your day and I'll see you in the next video.